welcome all of you for coming to um, Michigan's only ACE yes. at this point in time. So we're actually in a in a really cool position um, and looking to to grow things. And so we'll talk a little bit more about you know future plans and ideas and desires um, towards the end of this meeting. But um, we're kicking off the year by um, getting into some basics. So today we're going to be doing what is called a deep dive. Um, I, I've been doing a few different types of, of events over the past uh, the past few months. Deep dives are where we basically go into some of the, I don't want to say darker corners because I don't want to give off that imagery, but some of the less used areas within um, the JIRA system. And so we'll be going into, what's that? Uh, the hacks and tricks. The hacks and tricks. Yeah, that's a good way to, a, a good way to put it. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at some of those seldom used areas of functionality that's available for filters as well as, as dashboards. And unlike James Cameron's deep dive to the Mariana Trench, there's no pressure here. So um, <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad everyone's here and I hope everybody will learn something. Um, and if not, that's okay too. So we'll we'll jump right in. So let's talk about filters. Um, if you, if you were able to attend our previous session, we talked of, or not our previous session, but we did talk about um, JQL and we went into some of the you know basic approaches to writing JQL as well as some of the more advanced functionality. And so this talk is actually building off of that foundation. Um, I'm assuming that everybody here that is using JIRA has at one point in time touched JQL. So that is an assumption I am making. Um, if you have not, then talk to me afterwards and, and we can we can certainly change that for you. But um, if you are not familiar, um, a filter is basically a saved JQL query. So um, that's pretty much what it is. We, we encourage the use of filters. If you find yourself having to continually write the same JQL query over and over again, you know, filters are a way to save some menial work so that you can focus on, on what's most important with whatever role you're fulfilling. So um, when it comes to filters, the most that people will do, the most that I did for several years when I started using Jira was I'd create a filter and I'd keep clicking on the filter over and over again anytime I wanted to pull up the query. And that's the extent of, of my involvement with filters until I learned that there was more you can do with filters. So that's what we're going to, to talk about today. Um, so, there's a few things here that I want to talk about. The first is that you have the ability to change uh, filter columns. So I'm just going to go over here to the filter page. Um, I am going to be speaking primarily from Jira Cloud. So if you are using Jira Server, Jira Data Center, the interface will be different, but the principles are still in play. So um, the information here is still relevant. Um, obviously, you can you know you can write a query. If I were to do something simple like you know project equals platform uh, development and ass assignee equals Elena Grant, I could I could go ahead and save this, and I could save this as Elena Grant's. Dev work, obviously not a best practice here. Um, use a current. I mean, you you use the current user function if you want to make this reusable. Otherwise, this otherwise this is only specific to Elena Grant's work, right? Um, you can rearrange the columns that appear in your results list if you are familiar with the columns drop down right here. Actually, let me just take this out and do a search. Um, let me try this again. You have the ability um, when you click the columns drop down to to change the columns that do appear on your result set. So, in this case, if I didn't want to see who the assignee was, I didn't care about when this issue was created. You know, I could uncheck those columns. I could search for additional fields. For the most part, any custom field that you have in Jira, you'd be able to specify that column here. Um, and then, of course, when I hit done my result list will update. And you can see that my created column and my assignee column did disappear. If I were to save this as a filter, well, before I do that, let me just point out, 
you know, you have you have your personal defaults for what fields appear, and these defaults are tied to your user. Um, you also have system defaults that um, are also available for anyone. Um, but if I were to go ahead and save this filter and hit save, one scenario I've run into multiple times in the past is people will create multiple filters. And based on those filters, there are certain fields that are relevant to some filters, but not to others, right? So um, people find or people make a pain point that, you know, I hate having to rearrange the columns for each filter that I, I pull up, right? Um, what's nice about filters is once you create and save a filter and you pull it up again, when you hit this columns drop down again, you'll see another option here for filter. And if you click on this tab first, and you, when you click on this tab, you can see that um, you can control which columns appear for this result set. And these changes would only ever apply to the filter. So in this case, I could uncheck those columns. I can hit done. Let me hit search again. And I can see that now the filter has been updated. And what's nice about those changes, they are tied to the filter. They don't mess with your personal defaults. They don't mess with the system defaults. And it's different for each filter. So yes. that address the question I asked you earlier today about Manal said that she has a column that hits all of hers? I think so, if I understood it correctly. Yep. Yep. And so she, we were going fast and then near the end of the day. So, but. Yeah, so the question that Jeff brought up is, you know, does this answer a question based on a conversation we were talking about earlier? And my answer was yes. So um, just out of curiosity, how many people here were aware of, of this filter column functionality beforehand? Show of hands. You're playing me, Mark. <laughs> oh, I was new. I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this stuff here. I, didn't know, I, I opened it up and I looked at, immediately looked for what columns are there, what I want. When I don't want, I don't even pay attention to built for the system or my right. so look at Right. And, 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 and if you think about that, it's such a great way to do it because then you can share it and then you get the right columns to show up. Like, so, hey, take a look at this. And all of a sudden, you maybe have two days. Now, you date will always show up when you send them back. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, and if, if I were to just switch between these filters, right? If I go to, you know, customer support tickets, Elena Grant's dev work, and I go back to test ACE, um, you can see that those columns did change when mm -hmm. I switched between those filters. So um, hopefully that saves some time for you um, in the future. Is that, can you order your, your columns? Uh, you do that manually at the top. Yeah, so that's a good question. The question is, can you can you reorder your columns? The answer is yes. Um, you would have to do this, you know, drag and drop mm -hmm. um, functionality. So that is available. Any any other questions about this functionality before we go on? Don't feel bad if you if you didn't realize this was under your nose this entire time. I actually didn't know about this until not too long ago, and I've been using Jira for whatever for however long. So um, yeah. Blink and you miss it, but that's why we're doing a deep dive. So. All right. What was the drop down button? You go back to column. What was the drop down if I go back to column? No, go down to the bottom, right next to the team, drop down, they have a drop down with an arrow. Keep going down, down. Oh, down. yes. Go to the right. Go to the right. Right there. Oh, well, as you select it. See, what's the, what's the little drop down, the little arrow next to the right? Oh, that's a good question. So when you're looking, okay, so the question is, what, what, what does this icon mean here next to this particular field? Well, in, in general, just to help you figure out whether or not you're selecting the right fields, um, you'll see the field type. And so that icon is just a visual indicator of what type of field it is. It yeah, that is okay. that it is about that. text down below on the, the one. It's interesting that some of them show it, some of them don't. Yeah, that's a good so, question. I, I wonder, I wonder why. why. Does anybody here on the call know why? Um, you see the field type for some fields, but not others. My initial gut instinct is that if it's a well, updated, is it? Is it oh. there's a custom field and maybe there was some metadata that wasn't added? Oh, I bet that's what it's possible. It's, I, I don't know. We like could those, honestly, as a group, come up with a theory here. Yeah, yeah, I would don't want to call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Conclusion by consensus, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, so that helps.
All right, good question. Good question. Um, any other questions before I move on? All right. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, when you save a, when, when you do save a filter, yes, you can specify which columns will forever be associated with that filter. Um, but there's also more you can do. Um, if you click on the details view up here, this will give you details about the filter that you just created. So this option will appear every time you create a filter. And you'll see a couple of things. You'll see, first off, who owns the filter. So there is a concept of ownership in JIRA. Um, and, and this is just to let you know basically who created the filter, or who's the current owner. You, you do have the ability to transfer ownership of a filter from one user to another. So let's say you know someone leaves your place of work and someone else needs the information that that filter returns. Um, you could have a JIRA administrator go in, change the owner, and then you know that could save some things as far as not having to reconfigure boards from scratch or not having to redo dashboards. So it's something to keep in mind, but you'll always see who the current owner of the filter is. And by default, that of course will default to whoever created the filter, right? I want to spend some time talking about permissions. So um, by default, when whenever you create a filter in JIRA, the filter is going to be a private filter that's only visible to you and editable to you. That's fine if you're working on an island in the middle of nowhere with, you know, internet, I guess, if that is possible. Um, but if you are working on a team and, you know, you're all sharing information together, that's probably not ideal. So um, instead of reinventing the wheel and instead of copying the JQL query and, you know, slacking it or putting it in a Microsoft Teams channel, um, what you can do is you can control who can, who can view the filter, basically, and who can edit it. So if I click on edit permissions right here, um, I do have the ability to rename the filter. If test ACE is not a descriptive enough name, I can add a description, which um, I admittedly skip over, but including descriptions is beneficial, especially if we're talking about multiple people coming in and using this filter. Again, you know, like with anything, only include a description if you don't feel like your filter name is descriptive enough, right? But if you if you go down a little bit further, you actually have the ability to specify who can view the filter. And so let's walk through some of these options right here. If I click on this drop down, I see four different options. I can specify whether or not I want to share this filter with people that have access to a particular project. So this is a very common use case for filters. So let's say I wanted to save this filter to the customer support project. I can select the customer support project and you do have the added ability to only share um, this filter to people within a specific role within that project. So if you have multiple roles defining your project, you have administrators, you have managers, you have users, viewers, team members, um, you could narrow it down to just a subset of those people within the project instead of making it blanket available to everybody. So if I wanted to make this available to just administrators, I could do that. Um, let's say you wanted to specify two out of the five roles in your project that needed to have access. You could certainly do that as well. Um, you would just click this drop down, select another role, and then click add. If I wanted to select a different project, I just go back in here to the project drop down, select a different project, and hit add. So, so multiple projects as well as multiple roles. Yes, you can choose multiple projects, you can choose multiple roles, you kind of have to walk through that step-by-step um, -step process that I just showed you where, you know, you specify one option, click add, go back, make a change, click add, and so on and so forth. So now this is telling me that people, ad administrators and customer support, as well as anybody in the design project have the ability to view this filter. Uh, I can choose to share this filter with a predefined group of users. And um, by default, the, the groups that appear here, um, I believe, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, the, the list of groups that you see appear in this dropdown would be the groups that you are a member of. So if you're not a member of a group, but you know a group is out there, that's probably not going to appear on this dropdown. It's probably designed that way to avoid 
you know, inadvertently sharing data with, you know, some team or whatever that you're not a part of. So you do have the option instead of adding users individually, just specify a group. Um, and, and that's good. You can choose to share this filter with the entire organization. There's no additional options to choose from here, but um, anytime you select my organization, it'll give you a little blurb that basically says anybody that's authenticated into your JIRA site will have access to um, this particular um, filter. And then of course we go back to our default option, um, which is private. So when you choose private, if you had any other previously configured um, people that could view it, then it would eliminate those automatically. The same is true for editing. The options are the same. So if you do need to provide granular um, levels of access to a filter, you can go as far as specifying viewers and editors. And then, you know, in, in all likelihood, your the number of editors might be significantly fewer than your number of viewers, right? So you have the ability to specify that as well. Um, what is different from viewers is you do have the ability to individually select users. So um, if within your project of 20 people, you, you and two other people would probably need to have the ability to modify this filter, you know, you can specify those two other people and call it a day. Um, does anybody have any questions about that before we keep going? This is gonna come up um, here again, but you know, the more you can reuse, the more you can share within JIRA. After all, JIRA is a collaborative platform. So um, it's nice to see that um, mindset applied to some of the functionality here. So don't live on an island if you don't need to, mm -hmm. unless you need a vacation <laughs> from work and people, I guess so. All right, um, any questions, comments? Yeah. Sam, I've got a couple questions. Absolutely, Foy. The, de the default behavior where every filter you make is automatically private just to you, is there a way for an individual account to change that or have it changed for them? I don't think so. Because almost every filter I make needs to be shared and it's an extra step, you know? So yeah. I was curious about that. And then too, just for the group, uh, if you haven't used filters before, I use them a lot and I still get gotcha when I'm moving quick and I go into edit and I add the people or project or whoever I want to share with and I don't hit save because I already hit add. Yes. So it, in the yes. UI sense, it feels like it's committed, but it's not until you hit save. <laughs> yeah, so let's, <laughs> warning, let's do warning. that. <laughs> So, I mean, if, if you notice um, here, before I modify the query, I can hit save as, so I could, if I wanted to like clone this filter, um, I, could, I could do that by saving as, we all know how that works. But if I were to start modifying it, let's say ordered by created descending, you'll see a little um, indicator here that says that this filter was edited. And as Foy was, as, as Foy was pointing to, just by hitting search, you're not actually saving the filter with the new query. You actually have to physically go in here and click save. True. Or and, save as or discard. Yep. And I was also speaking to when you're editing the details for the permission groups, same kind of feeling. Oh, when okay. Yeah, yeah. When you add, but also, yeah, even more important. Yeah, your changes to your filter aren't saved just because you ran the query. Well, for I totally went a different direction, but I'm glad you brought me back, man. Thank you. Bye. No, no, no. Both both are good heads up for people who are getting into it. It's causing me a little consternation here and there. Yeah. So. Yeah. We don't want that. So no, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Nothing's right. worse than setting up a dashboard with like seven filters and being really proud of it and sending it to somebody and saying, "What do you think?" And they go, "I don't have access to any of these." And it's like, right. "Oh, right, <laughs> right." Has Has anybody here um, ever messed with? specifying viewers or editors in their filters before? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so a few of you. Yep, so yeah, again, it's it's one of those things where it's, it's nice to know that it's there if you need it. Probably most of the time you don't need to, or you probably only need to worry about it when you're initially setting up a filter, right? I think one challenge that we've had sometimes when we set it up by project, 
you don't always know who's got access to a product. You select one. So I used to do a lot of implementation with like a product like Carolina and top. Okay. A lot of the people who have access to a project may people may not like a, a user account may not have that. So always thinking about like, all right, who then has access to a project? Because sometimes you don't have visibility to that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Nice. Nice. Oh man. So that was for Jira Align though, right? Yeah, it'd be for Jira Align. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Man. Nice. Um, all right. Any other thoughts? All right. The the last thing I wanted to talk about with filters before we move on is this other section down here called subscriptions. So this is one of those pieces of functionality that I haven't personally had to use much of, but I'm also kind of on an island on my own at work right now. So I don't really need to report to anybody. But the idea behind the functionality here is if you've ever found yourself in a situation where someone say one of your superiors is asking you for a report on x y and z um chances are if you did not know about this functionality or you're using a completely different system right you're probably doing some manual labor and you know executing a query exporting that data to excel or a spreadsheet maybe touching it up doctoring up a bit to you know showcase your you know skills your cleanup skills and then you send it out and and you do that and you're good for the week and then you have to repeat the same exercise the following week or you could follow a different cadence where every month you need to provide a report right well to to reduce the need to have to do that um instead of doing that manually on your own why not just let jira do it for you and that's where filter subscriptions come in so filter subscriptions um, hit that scenario that i just described for you you basically allow the system to run your filter on your behalf and notify certain people of about the results of that filter or send the results of that filter to the recipients that you specify so in a filter subscription um, you can specify whether or not you want this to be a personal subscription so if you need to do this for yourself um, you can specify personal subscription or you can choose from a number of different groups that are available which similar to what we were looking at earlier the groups that do appear here would be groups that you are a member of. So again, um, that prevents the need from you um, accidentally spamming someone else with data that is not relevant for them. So I'm just gonna stick to personal subscription right here. Once you specify who the recipients of your filter subscription should be, um, you have the ability to configure the schedule that you want your filter to execute. So um, if you're familiar with, you know, in, you know, specifying cron jobs or using some other scheduling tool. It's pretty straightforward here. You can choose the frequency on a, you know, timely basis, you know, day, days, months, weeks. Um, if you hit the advanced expression, you have the ability if, you know, to actually put in a cron expression there if you prefer, or if the functionality that's available here is not sufficient for what you're trying to do. So um, just going to do this on a days per week basis and then based on what you select um, you'll see additional options appear here right so um, I want this to if I were to do this on a weekly basis I could say you know do this once every day instead of you know multiple times during the day but you do have that option if you need to you can specify the time of the day that you want this filter to execute so you know let's say I wanted to view the results of this filter at the end of the day. And let's say I send this email out on a Friday. Um, I can specify that and you can see how straightforward it was to set up that filter subscription. Um, very user-friendly if you have basic schedules you need to configure. And then the last option you can configure here is to specify whether or not you want the system to send an email even if no data is returned from the filter. So. Um, that may be useful if you want to make sure that the, the filter ran and, you know, there actually is no data to look at as opposed to be concerned whether the data hit your spam folder or, you know, whatever. So those are the three areas that you can configure. And as soon as you hit subscribe, now I'm going to, I'm going to get that email. Uh, what's nice about filters is, you know, you can specify multiple subscriptions on a single filter. So if you have, 
you know, different people you want to send it to at different intervals, you have that option as well. So when I said so, my question went away. That's okay. <laughs> we'll 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 find it. We'll find it. Exactly. Yep. There were no results. If it says email this filter, what you're emailing is just the result, not the filter itself, just the results. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. that is correct. That. Yep. So the question was when you select this checkbox, are you getting the results of the filter or are you get are you just getting a link to the filter? And the answer is you're getting the results of the filter. So and we've used that for like open tickets. And so all of a sudden there's no open tickets, which is good. You get it back and says, oh, you know, zero, zero record in terms of sweet, no open tickets. Right. Yeah. Great way to finish Friday. And yeah, exactly. Right. You know, I I don't know if I've ever had a Friday where that was the case, right? I so I long for that. Yeah, I know, right? So, so Sam, as a yes. potential example, I could set one of these up to check my bug bug board to see if there's any new bugs in there mm -hmm. in the to do column. So I could send it to me 10 o'clock each morning. So, so I don't have to keep going in there. I I'll get the results sent to me if there's a new one I have to look at. Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the the question was, can I set up a filter subscription to send me a list of all the bugs that were recently created and say, can I do it at 10 o'clock each morning? The answer is yes. And, you know, that may be advantageous for you if, you know, you're starting the day um, and you start by looking at your emails, it's going to be there front and center for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that way you don't have to like go through the navigation you know process to get to a particular board or location in jira not that that is a pain but again we're we're aiming for convenience here right, right. so cool. that way if i forget to do it on a day it's there for me yes i can always forget to do it because i'll get the results sent to me. yep mm -hmm. yep that's cool yeah so if i were to just create another filter subscription right here I can go here to manage subscriptions. And if I need to, you know, if I need to go back and modify any subscriptions on the filter that I created, I can do that by hitting manage subscriptions and that'll take me to this page. If a subscription is no longer necessary, I can delete it. If I just want to run it right now, I can I can manually trigger this. So so that's what you can do. And then that and then that'll help you, you know, do some troubleshooting or debugging or if you need to do an off cycle execution of the filter, you can. So like right now, I think every time something comes in, in our Slack channel, if something's sent to our, our Jira for a bug, you know, something, a new ticket created in Jira, I I get that and I have to go and look to see what it is. Mm -hmm. This is why I wouldn't have to do that either. Right. Like you said, if it's, it's one of my bug tickets, I can go for it. Yeah. That's yep. Why? Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and, we, and when we talked about JQL, we talked about, you know, how you could introduce some time functionality, right? So, you know, going back to Jeff's use case, if I wanted to see, like, if I wanted to see every morning at 10 o'clock, the, you know, how many new bugs were created, right? Um, I would just include and created is greater than, you know, negative 24 hours or negative one day, I think would be better. So this would show me anything that was created within the last day. Mm -hmm which I guess in this case, it's either none. So my query might be off or because this is a demo site, that data doesn't apply. So I promise I know my JQL syntax, everybody. I'm not a fraud. So um, I can't remember if I asked this, but how many of you have actually used um, filter subscriptions before in the past? Okay, all right. So, no, I well, no, I know, uh, and that's okay too. That's okay. So, so again, the, the, the idea here is, you know, save yourself some time and effort and, mm -hmm. and focus on, on what matters more. Right. So we're at a point in life where, you know, there are just some things we don't need to do and, you know, let's take advantage of that. So, so that's filter functionality for you. Does anybody have any questions about filters before we go on to dashboards? Okay. All right. Anybody online? Awesome. All right. Um, all right. So let's go on to, to dashboards. So dashboards, I think, are pretty self-explanatory in the sense that I don't need to explain to anyone what a dashboard is. 
Um, like filters, there's a lot of similar functionality with dashboards. You can create any number of dashboards. There's no hard limit. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and create a dashboard right now. So you can see that this dialogue here when I'm creating a dashboard looks very similar to that um, filter window that we were just looking at where you can you know, specify the name and the description and you can specify who can view or who can um, modify your dashboard. So um, I'll just keep these as defaults for now, private to me. And so the first thing I wanna talk about is um, you do have the ability to change the layout. Um, you have a limited set of options right here, which is which is good because you know there are certain gadgets that you would use on your dashboards that would probably render better in a wider column as opposed to a narrower column, right? So depending on how you want to configure your dashboard, you can play around with the layout. Um, while this is great, you know, I, I do personally wish we had the option to like include a certain layout, like for you know the top row and then a different layout for the bottom row, like have a you know two side-by-side -side gadgets at the top, three on, you know, on the next row, but maybe that will come in the future. We'll see, but um, this is better than nothing. So you do have the ability to you know, modify your layouts right here. And if we take a look at some example dashboards, let's just take a look and see what, what they've got here. Here's a nice you know, three column layout that, that you can see. And you know, if you're into art, you might find this really cool. Um, but, but yeah, you do have the ability to change the layout for dashboards. That's something I notice um, people aren't really aware of, but that option is available. Um, very similar to what we saw with filters, you do have the ability to, to share your dashboards. And I'm not going to walk through all these options again, because we already did, but that functionality is the same. And so, you know, there are use cases where you may want to create a dashboard for yourself, um, but there are many more use cases where you're going to want to have dashboards available to your entire team or to specific roles. So um, definitely keep that in mind as you are as 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 you are standing up your dashboards. In Jira, there is a concept called a system dashboard, which administrators can modify, and that would be like you know the first dashboard you would see if you were to log into a a Jira site. So if you want to standardize that and, you know, say gear that towards people that are new to your company, um, that would be a good place to configure a system dashboard. But that option is there. And then, of course, other options that you can do with dashboards here. Um, you can copy them so you don't have to rebuild a very complex dashboard from scratch. You can configure automatic refresh. Um, and you could specify how often do you want the dashboard to refresh. So, you know, if you're one of those people that has like 10 monitors at home and you have one of them dedicated to your, to just showing your dashboard window, um, that might be a good um, configuration to set. Um, the next thing I want to talk about with dashboards, uh, I want to, I do want to talk about wall boards. So uh, wall boards are pretty cool in the sense that um, you can actually take your dashboard and um, basically make it available in a way that, in, in a format that, you know, you could cast onto a TV or some other large screen within your team. And so, you know, what this will do is, you know, I, I'm looking at a wall board for a single dashboard right here. But what this will do is this will, you know, depending on the number of gadgets that you have configured on your dashboard, it'll show, you know, two or in this case, three, um, and it'll just work through and, and go down, you know, all of your different gadgets. So if you have a team working together in, a, in the same location and you have a TV screen, um, a wall board would be, uh, it, it would be something to consider if you wanted the team to be aware of what those metrics were. Common use cases I've seen in the past, you know, if you're working on a scrum team, sprint burn downs, you know, having that um, very visible is nice. And then you don't, you don't have to only mention it in stand-up saying we're behind or not. And it's cool to see that change throughout the day if that's something that happens. So you can configure the wall board, you can cast this um, to another TV screen. It's probably hard in the post COVID area to talk about you know, the usefulness of this functionality. Um, you could be at a company that's going to stay fully remote. 
or you could be at a company that's forcing people to come back into the office. Um, but again, obviously, if you're a remote team, the wallboard functionality might not be great for you unless you do have a 10 monitor set up at home, right? So, um, but this functionality is there should circumstances change. And if you wanted to, if, if you wanted to look at this from like a, you know, company perspective, let's say your Jira site, you have, you have a Jira site for your company and you have multiple dashboards out there and um, you want to cycle through multiple dashboards instead of multiple gadgets within a dashboard. Um, you can do that um, in this secondary section right here, you can configure a wallboard slideshow um, and you can pick and choose which dashboards you want to um, have cycle through. Um, you can specify what the transition effect is, which is, you know, cool, a nice cool feature to have. You can specify how often you want the dashboards to, how often you want the display to change. And you also have the ability to preview it. So in this case, you know, I'm looking at the HR dashboard right here. And if I can, if I can talk for 30 more seconds, then you'll probably see this change or not in this case. Well, this is probably, I think, within the same dashboard. So that's what's happening. But you do have the option to cycle through multiple dashboards is, is essentially what I'm getting at um, right here. So um, just curious, how many of you have heard of wallboards before for dashboards? Is this a entirely new concept for, for those of you that are here? New to me for Jira. Okay, yeah. Um, for those of you that have heard of this, have you used wallboard functionality in the past? Okay. Would that be what you talked about the burn down for a for a sprint? Mm -hmm. Would that be probably what we used to have on the boards like back when I was an LPS? Yeah, yeah. So would that, would that have been a wall board or would, would he just be projecting? It would have been a wall board. Yeah. So Jeff is asking about, you know, earlier because Jeff because Jeff and I work at the same place. He was asking earlier if what we saw on a TV screen here at the office way back when was a wall board. And the answer is yes. Yep. Pre COVID. Yeah, pre COVID. Yeah, I know. I, 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 you know, there are times I feel bummed, like, oh, I didn't get to live during the BC to AD transition, you know, to go from, you know, BC one to 81. But now I can say pre COVID, post COVID, right? So, which is almost as cool, but not. So, anyway, that's besides the point. So, so that is, um, that is, that that is wallboards for you for dashboards. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, um, and I haven't I haven't brought this up yet is um, you do have the ability right now to see these filters to see these dashboards. You do have to log into your Jira site right to see that, but you do have the ability if the use case necessitates it to um, share some of this information with the public. So. In order to do that, you would go. You you would need to have a Jira administrator or hire go into the administration settings, um, and then once they go there, they can click edit settings, and there is an option right here which by default is turned off, but it gives you the option to publicly share um, filters and dashboards with people even if they are not logged into your site. So I'm just going to turn that on for this site and show you how that would change the, the functionality that's available here. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this dashboard right here. Now, if I were to click on the share option for a dashboard, if I select this dropdown, I can see that a new option has appeared here called public. And if I choose to add that, then I will have made this dashboard publicly available without needing to log in. Now, from a dashboard perspective, I, I know that you know for the for those of you that are security minded, there's probably a bunch of alarm bells that are that are going on um, in your head. But um, if you do make a dashboard public, that doesn't mean that the data within that dashboard is automatically public as well. So, making a dashboard public gives non-authenticated users the ability to access the dashboard. But if you want the information in the dashboard to be publicly available, you need to configure the source of that information to be available as well. So um, take, for example, um, 
let's say I have this, I, I have this um, filter results gadget right here. So I know that there is a filter that's driving um, the data that appears in this gadget. It's not going to be publicly available until I do at least one of two things. One, I need to make the project available to the public. So I need to set the browse projects permission, which gives users the ability to view that project. I need to set that up. I, I need to basically allow the public to have that permission. That's the first thing I need to do. Next thing I need to do is I want to make sure that the filter that is driving the information in this gadget, I want to make sure that that's not like private to me. So I need to make that, I need to make that publicly available as well. So if I were to go back to um, my filter option right here, go to details and click on edit permissions, you can see that now the public option has appeared there. That public option will only appear if from an organization perspective, that option in the administrator settings is turned on, right? If public sharing is turned on. Now, some of you might be wondering, why on earth would I want a project and a dashboard to be made available to the public? Well, good question. There are there are times where you know you may be working on content or you may be working on stuff that needs to be you know publicly available. Um, we do it. You know, about it. Atlassian does it. New feature request bug. You know, you can go out and see our public dashboards on that. Okay, so we've already got a use case right here. Yeah, so, exactly. so even for Atlassian, you know, being a transparent company at the core, right? You can see Atlassian's dashboard without having to log into Atlassian. So, you know, there are other use cases. Let's say you're working in the public sector. You know, you're probably working on, you know, if if you're like managing meeting meetings and you want to show like what work is being done within a particular area or provide metrics regarding, you know, X, Y, and Z. I don't know, like take for example, the construction that's happening in Michigan, right? You know, if you wanted to see rate of completion, right? Um, as opposed to paint the town orange, um, you'd be able to configure a public dashboard, make that link available, and then people would be able to see in real time as work is moving through your workflow, um, the rate of completion, if you have that configured in your dashboard. So while the use cases may be small, they are out there. And if you run into a situation, you have that option. But again, just by turning on the ability to share publicly, that does not mean that all of a sudden your internal projects are publicly available. So we're not opening up Pandora's box here and inviting unwanted attention. So that's all I wanted to talk about with dashboards. Does anybody have any comments or questions about? about dashboards before before we move on.